Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today on Dynamo BIM. On this episode of Python for Revit Tools, we're going to be doing something really, really awesome. We're going to be creating a Python script within Dynamo. I have a son in Dynamo. Like that in itself is really awesome and I'm really excited about it. And we're going to be loading families in through Dynamo using Python. This is, is not something that you can do using a Dynamo node. There's a bunch of custom packages that we, you know, can download that help us do this. But Asan's going to show us how to do this in Python. So here we go. Yeah, finally. Asan in Dynamo. Yeah, I know. Sold my soul finally. Um, <laughs> no, it's actually good. Uh, I kind of, I've always played with, uh, uh, like, you know, visual programming environments like Grasshopper and a little bit with Dynamo, but it actually it's super, super helpful to, to know Dynamo. So I appreciate that part being patient with me. You actually showed me a whole bunch of components that you can select directories and files and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty useful. There you go. Okay. Yeah, directory from path. You know, how to list contents of a directory. Exactly. Pretty good. Okay, um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take over and start sharing. Okay. So let me grab these stuff out of the way. Wait, right, so this is my Dynamo, which is, you know, kind of surreal seeing Dynamo in my share screen. Um, but so what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about how we can load a family. Let's say this family file that I have in the corner, let me actually minimize all of this stuff. Let me say, let's say I have this family file, custom family, Zero one. We have added this to the Notion page two. Let's say we want to load this family inside the Revit doc document using the um, using the API. Um, the obviously for like single family instances, it's not that big of a deal. But when you have a lot of families that you want to be loaded, or uh, you have a tool that uh, depends is kind of dependent on the existence of a family, and you want to make sure that that family is loaded inside the document, so maybe you can create instances of it all of that kind of stuff. That would be uh, actually helpful. Like one of the examples would be. We created a tool a long time ago for mechanical engineers that would uh, mark locations of their um, their equipment with a sort of like a generic family um, instance with, that had a cross and a location marker. And we inside that tool, we kind of have to make sure that that family instance is already loaded, right? Um, so we have added a couple of links to this Notion, Notion page. If you take a look at that, you see that uh, there's a load family. Uh, there's a iFamily load options interface, which we'll talk about. This is kind of new and a little load family symbol that we also talk about at the end of this. Um, if you go to this uh, load family, you'll see that the document object in Revit API has a utility method called load family. Now there are two things about this that are sort of like mostly C-sharp uh, uh, oriented and specific. Uh, one is that you can see that there are multiple different flavors of the same load family. Depending on the input type that you pass to it, uh, the environment is C-sharp when it's executing this code automatically picks the right, uh, right um, family, uh, I'm sorry, right flavor. And Python does the same too. So if you pass a, um, let's say a document object, it will pick this one. If you path a, if you send a path, which is a string to the method, it will automatically pick this one. But it really doesn't matter for us because all of them are intended to do the exact same thing. Okay, so um, I've already dropped a Python node inside this, inside this uh, Dynamo definition, and I've copied and pasted that template Dynamo code that we have inside the Notion page inside here, right? Um, our Python script has an input, which is supposed to take the path of a family file, and then output, which is supposed to um, give us a Boolean value, which tells me whether that family was loaded or not. Um, if we have a list of these families and we, they go through this Python script, and all of them got loaded. We got a list of Boolean values that says true and false, and we could detect which one didn't get loaded, stuff like that, right? Uh, so we actually get a result value from, from the output. Um, for the first one, we're gonna go browse. We're gonna use the file component, go browse and select that custom family. And it would show here that that family is selected. And if I throw a watch in here, it should give me the path of that file, right? Um, you can, provide the path directly inside a code block or something like that too. But uh, this is actually, uh, Dana showed me, and this is uh, actually quite a nice component to have. Um, this could be a list of family paths too. So maybe you have a whole list of these that you get from a directory, or you have these stored in a Excel file or something like that, and you want to uh, load it inside Dynamo and pass it to that component. It, the component just needs the path of these, 
uh, files, right? Um, we're going to go here on line 28. I'm going to grab the first input as the file path. We're going to start our transaction and end the transaction just as before. Uh, we're going to call the load family method that I just showed you with a string value. So it's really this one. And if you look at the documentation, it says system string, the fully qualified file name of the family file, usually ending in .rfa. So the full path of that file, which we got from the input, we pass it to that load family and pass the result of it to the output. The result of this load family is a Boolean value. And it tells us here the return value, true if entire family was loaded successfully into the project, otherwise false, right? If, it, if Revit hit any error during that load process, this method will return a false. And we know that that family didn't get loaded. Um, that's pretty much it for loading a family. So I can route this to, uh, notice that we, I don't have in here, I don't have any generic models right now. That custom family that we created is a generic model. So I'm just gonna route this through, actually let me connect the output first and route this through as input. It's to, it'll do its job, returns true. And we can see that a generic model, that custom family with all its types is loaded inside that active Revit document. Now that we have my screen shared, I have the Python template, which we have inside of my file, which we will make sure is up on Notion with the Python template, which was reviewed in episode one of Python Tools for Revit, if you didn't watch it. And you can see here that we already have the document in that sample. So we should be good to go. And so on line 28, we need to bring in our input. So file path equals in index of zero. Beautiful. And then in the output, we can call it, right? Yeah, call the doc so dot, doc load, dot family. Uh, load, right? Yeah, load family. Family, and then we'll give it the file path. File path. There you go. Save, run. Okay, uh, this was. Line 34, blah, blah, blah. What does it say? No file selected. It doesn't seem like. Oh, I, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. my B. Yeah, there's no file. My there. B. There we go. True. Loaded. Okay, great. So here's the second part of this, which is uh, the slightly more challenging part. Run into this issue that, hey, the family is loaded. What are we going to do? And you know that uh, a lot of times, like if I go here and want to load the family inside using Revit UI right here, it'll pretty much do nothing, right? Um, if the type parameters are different, it's going to ask me, hey, the family already exists. Do you want me to override the type parameters and stuff like that? Um, so there are some questions that Revit needs to ask in case of like seeing existing families, existing shared families and whatnot. And because it's really hard to provide these as an option to, to, the, um, to the function that we are calling, there's a convention in uh, applications and APIs, especially in Revit API, to use what's called an interface. So on the second link here, uh, right there inside the notes that says I family load options. I'm going to click on that link and it'll take me to this, the interface, I family load options. Interface is, whenever you see this, it means that you have to create a custom type that implements this interface and provides these methods that are sort of like predefined. So Revit can call these methods and get your response to specific questions. Like for example, it will call this when the family is found and it will ask you, do you want me to override the values? And you have to respond to it. Or it will call this one and says a shared family version is found. If your family has like nested shared family contents and that kind of stuff, right? Um, not all of these are always applicable, but in a lot of cases when an interface is required, we kind of well want to provide it so we get the, um, um, we, we, we can communicate with the Revit API on the special cases. So now I'm going to grab the one, the full script uh, example that I have here that I've implemented an example of this um, handler inside the Dynamo definition. And I'll show you how that one is going to work. Okay, so on line 28, we grab the file path. Um, right after that, I've defined an example of that sort of like a, a custom type 
that implements the DBI family load options. And I've named it family load options handler. You can choose a different name for this. Um, that part is not that important. If you forget about like how to define classes and stuff like that, you kind of have to go back to that Python uh, course that we had uh, uh, talking about defining specific type custom types. Yorosky University. Yeah, Yorosky University. And then, uh, so we implement that. So we have to create two functions on family found and on share family found exactly as they're defined here, right? These two must exist because Revit expects these two on this, on this type. And then it will pass, the first one is self because it's Python, but these, the rest of the arguments are gonna be family in use override parameter values, just like this one, family in use override parameter values. And the second one, these four, just like how the Revit API is, is defined. And then the Revit API tells, tells us, for example, it says family in use indicates if one or more instances of the family is placed in the project. So it will tell you when it calls this function, if this is true, it will actually tell you that this family is used in the model, which is important for us to know, right? When we are reloading or making decisions about the reload. And then the second one, it says out in front of it because it's a kind of a return value. That's how we respond to, um, to Revit. This override parameter value, we get to set it inside the function. So we get the family in use. I'm not using it here because I don't care, right? Uh, but this one, override parameter values, I'm actually setting it to true, telling Revit that if you see an existing example of uh, instance of this family, overwrite the parameter values for that um, for those instances when you're loading that family. And then I'm returning true to tell Revit, yeah, it's okay to load that family. So inside the inside the logic of this on family found, you could decide whether you want to load this family, you want to override parameter values and kind of other stuff based on the input that Revit gives you, right? Um, on shared family found, I've, uh, you're supposed to respond to two different things. You're supposed to, the out, there are two outs. So you have to tell two things to Revit. One is that which family source we want to use. And if you click on this, that's an enumeration value that says project and family. This is a little too, more, too complex for the scope of this. Don't worry about that. But this is only going to get called when a shared family is, is being found that's a duplicate. In most cases, you're not going to run into this problem a lot, but just know that that method exists in there for you to be able to override. And the way we use this is that on line 43, I've created an instance of this new type that I've created, the handler, and I've called it a uh, family load or F load handler. And then I've passed that also to the load family. So the first one, just like before was the string, the second one is this handler instance that we pass to Revit. So Revit can call these on um, occasions that it finds duplicate families and stuff like that. So this would be in the Revit API, this would be the last one, the last load family flavor that has a string file name, I family load options, family load options. This is the one, the, the custom one that we created. We already passed the um, path of the file. And then it has an output that sort of like is the family, right? Um, Iron Python automatically grabs that family for us and um, sort of like gives that family to, um, to our code here. So I can say result and family equals this. So I get two things back. The first one is the true or false that the family was loaded. The second one is this out family um, that um, Revit will give us when the family is actually loaded, right? Um, so I think I can say here, um, if family, so if family is, exists and it's not null, um, out equals family.name. I think it has a name property. And else out equals none, for example. So I'll save the changes here. I have to go and undo right here. And then uh, run this again, I think. How do you, let's disconnect this, reconnect it, runs, and then see the name of the family actually comes out of this. So I disconnected, I have to put this on manual. I disconnected this and reconnected it. And now when I say run, because the family already exists in the Revit model, Revit tells me that false on load, it already exists, and it doesn't give me the family instance because it's already, already loaded inside the Revit model. So just know for complex examples, complex situations, you might have to override this I family load options to figure out how you want to deal with the special cases when the family exists and direct Revit to override parameters and that kind of stuff, right? 
So now we should be able to pass a list of many different families into this, uh, into this component and get all of them loaded uh, inside the Revit document. Uh, I'm going to remove that one and use the, what was it? Um, what was the name of that code block? Get file. Directory contents. Get directory contents. Yeah, get direct. Um, look in the search oh, for directory. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, up there. <laughs> oh, okay, get directory contents. There you go. And then directory path, we're gonna select that one. So I'm gonna go here. I have a whole bunch of Revit files inside that test files. So we're just gonna use that and I'm gonna pass this to this. And if I look at watch, I should be able to see a list of, no, it does not. Uh, do I need a directory from path? You gotta run manual, you gotta run it. Oh, you're right. Okay. You gotta, oh, you do have it. Oh, yeah, gotta do yeah, that yeah, yeah. then, okay. So you got to do the directory path, select it, create a directory from the path, pass it to this. It's funny that it doesn't do it automatically. And you get all these results back. Yeah, I have a lot of files in there and a lot of them aren't really um, Revit family. So there's a lot of Revit models, log files, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff in here, right? Um, I'm going to delete these on that note. And then uh, to filter out the RFA files only, we're going to use the ends with ends with component that checks the, if a string is ending with another string. So we check all the file path, make sure, not a code block, let's say string, make sure they end in .rfa, which is a family file for Revit. And then if I check the bool on this one, the output on this one, it'll tell me that like, for example, a lot of them don't, but these three do. 23, 24, 25, these three do. And then we use uh, that filter component that you told me about. What was the name of it again? Filter by bool mask. Yeah, we use this one to filter out these files by this pattern. If you're using Grasshopper, that component is called call pattern. Um, so this way inside the sort of like using the, I keep deleting that watch component. Uh, so we see that only those three files will get passed sort of like uh, as an output here that are RFA families. So we'll ignore all the other ones, whatever, you know, text files, Revit models, any other file that they have that's not a family. And then you pass this one into the component and it would load those three in there. So this is an example of a sort of like a safer, um, safer script that doesn't, you know, doesn't crash on files that are not Revit families. Thank you so much, Asana. I can already think of so many ways of how to use this Python. Of course. Different Python, of course. Different Python.